What's up, everybody? It's your boy Tindo here. Got the human stream beam with me. Over here, we got Hannah Warrior Princess. And let me go ahead and tell you what we're going to do today. First thing we're going to do to get out of the way is talk about last week's video. Here's the Chia Pet from last week's video. It has no growth. We had one bloom on the back and it died. So if that's the only reason you came is to see how the Chia Pet did, I guess you can go ahead and leave because it's Rip Fam. <laughs> uh, Hannah, did you do a bad job taking care of it or what happened? We just don't have any sunlight in our apartment. <laughs> I, I don't know if it was the sunlight or if it was just the uh, uh, the seeds were like 10 years old. I don't know. Maybe. maybe I watered we, it. <laughs> well, maybe we can wash it all off and then do some new chia seeds. Maybe. You think the, one, the store-bought ones will work? I don't know. I guess it's not going to hurt anything to try. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We watered it. We did everything we were supposed to. Just nothing happened. But uh, F's in chat. For the Shrek Chia Pet. That was never going to happen anyways. And then the, the shrimp that we grew, I cried to kick those off the table accidentally. Did I even tell you that? Nope. I was doing some stuff and I was like, whack. So that was <laughs> never going to happen either. Uh, but yeah, so that's Rip. So I wanted to get that out of the way first. But what we're going to do today is, I, I, much like we did last week, let's do a little update. You guys go ahead and comment below. Let me know how things are going in your neck of the woods pertaining to the coronavirus uh, let's chat about that a little bit, and then let's wrap up the video by talking about uh, what movies maybe some of you that are stuck at home are watching, and then we'll also talk about uh, kind of the state of movies a little bit. There's some interesting stuff going on because, of course, movie theaters are closed. Right. So let's definitely talk about that a little bit. But let's start with uh, let's start with talking about a little bit what's going on with you guys. What up, peeps? What's up, Magic Cross? Welcome, welcome, David. Glad you're here, my man. Mag or Joe? Welcome as always. Um, Magic Cross says, you know, just hanging around the house, playing lots of video games, same. I've played so much Mario Kart, I'm almost sick of it. Like, I've played so much. You're a Mario Kart champ now. Yeah, I've gotten, I've gotten okay at it. I wouldn't say I'm great at it, but I've gotten a little bit better. Aubrey, what's up? Welcome. I'm glad you stopped by. If you want to talk movies, that's my subject. Well, hang on till the end, because that's what we're going to do. I want to know what you're watching, but not yet. Uh, just realized it was Tuesday. Same. We were all the way across town. Uh, we had some errands to run on the other side of town. And I, and I, and I kind of looked over on my phone. And I was like, it's Tuesday. Yep. And I don't know if you guys know this or not. I didn't know this until I moved here. But, like, Arizona does not switch time zones. So when we started doing the podcast, we started doing it at 4 o'clock. But since the rest of you have switched time zones, we now do it at 3 o'clock. So we're either going to have to change the time soon and do it a little bit later or change it when the time zone changes because I kind of don't like doing it. At th it's 3 o'clock for us right now. I should be at the buffet or something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> You're cro corona teened. Cor quarantine corona teened. <laughs> I can't. I tried to put corona and quarantine together and it that's really hard. Had a quit try to use words. Jocelyn says that the the, the chia pet got corroded. That's right. Uh, double rip. That's for sure. That was that was a complete and utter failure. Our, our trying to grow weird things. GBA Gamer, what's up? Welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, Jason said, I know a bunch of virus movies. I'll share in a few. Cool. I didn't think about that. I bet there's quite a few of those. Uh, do you have a Zelda plushie? I do not. I have yet to find one of those in the wild. Have you seen any? I have not. Yeah, I, I don't recall having seen any. But I will say, if you're not a member of our Discord, I'll tell you one good reason to go join it. I don't know if this person's going to be here or not, but there was one person that shared a picture in our Discord of, a, a, of nothing but a plushie haul. They brought home like 15 or 16 different plushies, and they were all almost all Nintendo Nintendo plushies like he had a, a Crash Bandicoot one maybe a couple of them weren't Nintendo but even still they were like vintage platformer plushies I was super jealous I don't remember if that person found uh, a Zelda one or not but uh, I've been finding a lot of Sonic plushies lately um, that and Pokemon yeah that and Pokemon stuff but uh, let's see uh, everyone that's watching, is there anybody here that uh, is, is working on an essential service and still is at work, or is the most of our, uh, or the most of our viewers are you guys, are you guys at home right now? I, I bet that I mean I imagine the people that are still essential service are probably at work right now and not watching. So I probably answered my own question there. Uh, but Brandon said art suggestion Halo Three Master Chief. I uh, love your art. Thank you. Thank you for saying so. Uh, if you don't know what he's talking about, on our website, Tindostrash.com, right down here below. 
we, uh, we, we've been selling some artwork. And uh, we haven't added any new prints yet. I've, I've had a few suggestions. Uh, that's the first suggestion for something Halo, which I do I do love Halo, so that's not a bad one. I think somebody actually suggested uh, Banjo-Kazooie or, or Crash Bandicoot, some of that kind of stuff. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll be adding some new ones soon. Uh, iBarn says, I ship internet for five hours still a day. Okay. Uh, where, you mean like you work in a warehouse shipping stuff? That's interesting. The Banjo Kazoo ones, though, same. Uh, I'm essentially sleeping till noon every day. <laughs> you know, we haven't started sleeping in super late, but I feel like every day, Hannah, would you say this is true? We've been going to bed about 20, 30 minutes later. Yeah, it was like 2 a.m. last night. Yeah. It was bad. <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you why, and honestly, this is we're going to end up making getting to this part of the conversation prematurely, but we've been watching Shit's Creek. Does anybody watch that? I, I watched the first couple episodes with Patrick's family when, we, when I went home with them. And uh, I was like, oh, this seems like something Hannah would like a lot. So I kind of held off and waited until we got home to watch it with her. And we've been watching it. Uh, so, like, we keep watching it at night after we're done with all of our work. And, like, last night we watched it to, like, 2.30. <laughs> I didn't remember that. I was like, oh, no, I've never seen it. Yeah. Because, like, I just completely forgot. Yeah. Well, we watched one episode uh, with your family. I, I should have talked because I guess they watch it. I guess your mom and dad watches it. Yeah, I think it was like my sister. Or something. Yeah. One of them, yeah. I, I meant to talk about that when your family was in town with them, yeah. but I, I didn't. Um, Jason says he's home till next week, then he'll be back to work. Where do you work at, Jason? Uh, I buy it says I work in a mall that is closed to the public. All right, gotcha. So Magic Cross says hilarious show. Yes, it is. It's surprisingly good. Uh, and it gets better, too. Uh, we're on season three or four. Four now. Yeah, and it just like it has turned into like you know those really feel good vibes you get from the office when like those real those those moments that they build to are coming. Yeah. Uh, it's got some of that going on. There's just some really well implemented moments. I wouldn't compare the show overall to the office. No. But those those mo I, you I would say one of the greatest things about the office are the payoffs. You know how long you have to wait for Jim and Andy. I'm Jim and Andy. <laughs> Jim and Pam to get together, or Jim and, I mean, you might have watched and hope that Jim and Andy, I'm talking about two different shows, aren't I? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm putting accurate. two different shows together. Um, but yeah, anyways, we'll talk about that a little bit more then. I don't want to get into TV shows just yet. Uh, Julie says that uh, I'm a caretaker in a group home, but we all work block shifts, Thursday night till Sunday morning. We aren't allowed into the building unless our temperature is below 100.2, so essential worker, but off. Well, that's interesting, Julie. Answer answer some questions for me that I'm pretty curious about. Are are you guys, as care workers, instructed to pretty much isolate yourself outside of work? Um, that's been something that's you know really fascinating, and well, I don't want to say fascinating. I'm not trying to sensationalize it, but something really new. You know, I was actually we're from Kentucky, so um, the Kentucky governor is doing these five o'clock live streams every day from, I don't know where from, the governor's mansion or somewhere in, I guess, Frankfurt. And, uh, you know, and I, we literally just turned it off before we went live on here, and he was instructing everyone that is any manner of caretaker that has any business taking care of older people, et cetera, to, like, absolutely don't do anything but your job and go straight home. So I just kind of wonder if, if uh, you're implementing anything like that in your work. Let's see, who else here? I got, I got behind. Oh, five dollars from the low profile gamer. Hey, Tindo, Patrick, Hannah. I hope you guys are doing well. Thank you so much for that five banger. We'll spin it on. We'll spin it on smashing some chicken wings. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, Probably on milk because we need more. <laughs> Anonymous lady said, "I'm still working and essential because I'm a nanny. New York considered nannies essential. Cool. That's good to know. That's interesting. Um, it, this is also also interesting because every state." I mean, the federal government, let's just be honest, is like kind of really mixed in its messaging and, and what's going on right now. So it's really neat that the state governments have, you know, really been taking care of things. And that, I, I have found that another very interesting thing to watch. Uh, but in doing so, state by state governors have, you know, their rules they've put out and stuff have been slightly different from others. And it's interesting to compare. But that's really interesting. Thanks for sharing. Uh, let's see. Been playing some Super Nintendo Sunset Riders. Uh, would you recommend that game? I'm a lawyer. I have basically four hours a week. 
That's interesting too. Uh, have you just been doing all your lawyering from work, or have you actually had to appear in court or anything during this? Wait, like you work four hours a week, or you have four hours of free time a week? Yeah, which I'm one? assuming working. Yeah. But well, either way, let us know. Yeah. Uh, did you in? Uh, let's see. You didn't play disc today. I played Sunday. No, I didn't play disc golf today. Yesterday we did only because we do live next to a disc golf course. That is very not well known, and, and once you see this this golf course, you're not going to be surprised that it's not well known. It's like I don't know how to explain it to you. There's a big bunch of brush off the side of the road. You haven't been to this course with us. You need to go over. It's really close to here. It's like literally, you will drive by it. You'll have no idea there's a disc golf course there, but it's just, it's just a bunch of ugly brush, like bushes and stuff. It's really hard to play there, though. Yeah, well, it is. Yeah, it's a ter- honestly, it's not a great course. It's interesting because it's kind of hard and there's lots of bushes in the way. Uh, so we went over there thinking, well, maybe we'll find a place where there's not a lot of people. Because the disc golf course that we do regularly play at here, um, quite unfortunately, is uh, uh, overcrowded right now. If you drive by there, I guess everybody in town thought nobody would be at the park. So it was somewhere we couldn't go. But no, we didn't go today. Honestly, but the next time we'll be able to play a full round is probably going to be when this is all over. But I'm itching to play. I'm super itching to play for sure. Uh, yeah, so he said there's 25 cars at the park whenever he went by there. I, that doesn't surprise me. I, I have seen a few viral photos of hiking trails here in Phoenix where they're super overcrowded, hundreds of people, just because mm. everyone thought no one was going to go hiking, I guess. Also, the beaches in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> that's Yeah, that too. Uh, that's pretty crazy too. Hello, with all this free time, can we get some bad gameplay ahead? We definitely need to do that. Just uh, watch our streams. No, just yeah, just, <laughs> we, we should. Well, actually, we should just stream some bad video games, I guess. I've really been itching to make some Mario Maker videos. I really love playing me some Mario Maker. Uh, Lady Foxfire said, I couldn't find this on YouTube at all. Had to go through Discord for the link. Uh, that's really strange, but that doesn't surprise me. Um, YouTube can get pretty picky. Sometimes I'll create the live video. This is a bit of complicated YouTube nonsense, but sometimes you have to create your live stream, and then you have to go to your computer and then send the stream to it. And then for some reason, for no reason at all, I won't be able to bring up my own live stream. So if I can't do it, who can I expect to? So... I apologize for that, but it's just some weird YouTube uh, jumbo. Uh, but welcome anyways, Lady Foxfire. Glad you're here. Niagara Joe says, going to keep y'all going in the background, have some eBay shipments to pack up. How many you got? We uh, we had a pretty good shipping day yesterday. We did like 15 or 20. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It wasn't terrible. Uh, chicken wings for the win. That's what I'm talking about, man. All I ever, th- I don't know about you guys, but all I ever want to eat is chicken wings. If nutritional value were no issue and I could eat whatever I want every day, it'd be chicken wings. Is that your favorite food of all time? Is that my favorite food of all yeah. time? 100%. Patrick, what's your favorite food of all time? Probably just chicken in general. Just chicken? Yeah. yeah. Doesn't matter. If it's chicken. Almost any way you cook it, I'll eat it. Yeah. And it'll be delicious. Well, I, I would have probably put that below chicken wings, but I would prefer chicken wings over. But I did have five guys last night, so that and chicken are my go-tos. Listen, Ooh. listen, I've had, now we're just going to derail and talk about food. <laughs> I've had one hamburger in the last two or three months. Like, I quit eating red meat almost yeah. entirely. Not entirely, but almost entirely, but hamburgers was the main thing because I got this way because I would eat a hamburger for every meal, too. I just love them. Uh... But, like, we had one the other day because we got some meal and it came with one and I ate a bit of it, but it was, it was barely a hamburger. Uh, but, like, I've, set, I've been sitting here all day thinking, I think it's time to allow myself to have one. Yeah. And I'm thinking about going to Wendy's tonight and just smashing that triple cheeseburger. You know what I'm saying? That's three cheeseburgers. Right. But, you, <laughs> but by smashing, I mean, like, put my face on it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I don't know. I should probably hold off because if I go get one, then I'm just going to eat them every night for the rest of the week because I'm basically an addict when it comes to that kind of thing. Okay. He said he has four hours of work a week. Okay. Gotcha. Well, hopefully you bill for a couple hundred dollars an hour and you're doing (laughs) all right. (laughs) Um, but Lady Foxfire says bleeding edge just came out today on Xbox. Are you going to try it out, Pat? Um, you know about this one? I think I've seen it around like pictures probably. Uh, I don't know much about it. Um, I will go check it out though after the podcast right. because I have the game pass because like they do a dollar for like three months to try and get you to buy it but then you can just like keep redoing it every three months so I pretty much have the game pass so I'll go look at it alright um, uh oh 
Let's see if we can do this without. Actually, I'm just going to turn the sound off just in case of copyright strike, but let's look at it real quick. Ooh. Looks gnarly. What's it? What kind of game is it? Do you know anything about it? No. It looks, the art style, it looks like Overwatch. Like, that could be an Overwatch character. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> uh... We're not gonna. This is just a trailer. We're not gonna see actual gameplay. Hmm. Ooh, what? I, I, of trains. <laughs> yeah, I do know that uh, Doom Eternal just came out, which is a big one, and then Animal Crossing. Well, yeah, at, ooh, those we, are the two big ones. We that... do need to talk about Animal Crossing because, whoa, my my social media feeds have been nothing but that, <laughs> and my older brother. I wish he was here to talk about it. He could tell us how he likes it. My older brother, who you've seen on the channel a couple times now, he went out and bought the Banana Yellow Switch, just like mine, and got himself Animal Crossing, too. Nice. He's probably been killing it. As far as I can tell, I've actually not really played any Animal Crossing, but as far as I can tell, it's one of those games you've got to play daily, or else, like... Yeah. Yeah, and, and that... I wouldn't be able to do it. So I'm kind of stayed away from it. Uh, I haven't even tried my older... Like, I've got both of the GameCube... Animal Crossings. I found the second one I didn't have very recently, but like I just I don't want a big time commitment game. I just I'm not no. into it. But uh, have any of you guys been playing it? Uh, I'm definitely excited to hear how you're liking it. Uh, how did the Shrek Chia come along? <laughs> well, take it a look. didn't. <laughs> it's it's uh it's F's and Chad on that one. Um, I tried really hard, okay? <laughs> Magic Cross says they closed my favorite uh, wing spot because of Corona. Oh, BC, before Corona. I'm going to have to use that one for sure. Uh, Joe said, eight, all media. People are buying up stuff to stave off the boredom. Yeah. Uh, I haven't went hoarding video games yet, uh, but I, I have. There was a video game someone sent me earlier that was like, hey, get this game and we'll play it. And I looked yeah. to see if I could go get a physical copy. I hate to be a stickler about it. I just don't want to download digital games, yeah. Because this is what I do. Uh, but I was I was literally gonna leave for Walmart and go buy this game if I could. But does that mean we're in zero BC currently? Zero BC. The yeah, year zero. It's year zero. Corona. I guess so. Restarting the whole calendar. Uh, looks like it needs water or bad seeds. Well, we watered it the appropriate amount, and it did not grow except for one single sprout. <laughs> so we're assuming it was bad seeds because this thing. We got it out of Goodwill bins. So, who knows what journey it took to get to where it is now. I think Hannah ate the seeds. Lol. She probably did. Just licked all of them. Well. That sounds horrifying. <laughs> okay, so it is an Overwatch type game. Uh, Lady Foxfire hmm. said it's like third person melee Overwatch. Do it, you play it, Lady Foxfire? Or? Did she, is it out yet? Is it about to come out? I don't know. I think it's about to come I out. I read. Okay. Well. If anyone is going to play it, or if it is out, does play it, let me know. We can uh, play uh, together or something. You need Doom in my life. Yeah, I, the new Doom game, I, we should probably watch a trailer for that one, too. Uh, that, one definitely, that one definitely has my attention a little bit more than, like, you know, uh, Animal Crossing or whatever. What's the plan with the two empty shells beside Pat? That's a good question. Um, honestly... I don't know, because what I've been doing right now, all of my video games are, like, double-packed. They're too deep. So oh, I put, geez. like, sports games and nonsense stuff in the back and then put games I might actually want quick access to in front of them. Um, but I don't have it in a way that super makes sense right now. So there's another shelf just outside of the shot you can't see that's got video games, and they're probably going to go down there. Uh, but I, I, my, my life is just destroyed right now in this game room because we took shelving out to put in our toy booth and it needs the, it needs a couple more shelves and I'll probably empty out a whole other shelf and take it and then piece this game room back together whenever I buy some more uh, shelves at the thrift store. But I don't know. I've just had rubber ducks setting there up until today. Uh, I just, I just uh, have a lot of trouble keeping this place. Tom from MySpace. Says, Tom from MySpace is rapping, I guess. Wow. <laughs> Patrick, Patrick, hey fool, you know that dude's sick, run up on you real quick, <laughs> knock you down like John Wick. And then stab you in the eye, most likely. I like it. Um, Accurate. But yeah, that's uh, this game room is in shambles right now because of our uh, current or recent uh, toy booth escapades. I don't know where I don't know where half the stuff is, and plus, like, 
Patrick rags me every other day about putting the games in alphabetical order. <laughs> and, like, I keep wanting to do that. I keep thinking maybe we'll make a video about it or maybe, like, we could even do it on a live stream. Like, I don't know if it'd be fun for you guys to watch us alphabetize these games right now, but we've kind of kept that in our back pocket thinking we could do that on a live stream or something. But I, I just keep not doing it because every other day I take half the games off this shelf, put them over there. Well, that's just me being excess or obsessively organized. Yeah, well... I like them being neat, but I don't necessarily have to have them organized at the moment because there's like 20 games in, in all of these. Like, I, there's two, there's like 2,500 games there. Yeah. And there's probably 20 of them that I have any intention of playing really soon. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so I, I just, it's not worth the work yet. If it was a more permanent place, like if we had an office or something and, and, or, and a set, like a studio set, I would be more than glad to organize them in a way that's super permanent. But. Right now, just because it was pointless. Uh, let's see. I just downloaded it and tried the tutorials. Uh, well, let us know how you like it. I, I don't. I, I don't know if it's out yet or not. But I played Overwatch basically right after it was new, a little a few months in, and I liked it quite a bit. More so, just kind of like playing with people I know. But like, there's a new Overwatch play mode out now with. Overwatch 2, and I really thought it looked like something fun for us to play together on the channel or something, but we never got around to that, but we'll definitely have to pay attention to this game for sure. Uh, but yeah, well, I guess I guess if that's all if that's all the updates you guys have for coronavirus and what's going on with you, if anybody else has got any more stories about what's going on with them, I got one more story. Do you guys Have you guys had anything else weird happen coronavirus-wise, being in public? Uh, not in public, no. What, in private? <laughs> well, I was just going to say, like, the uh, thing where that guy stole the coronavirus tests from that oh, lab yeah. in Tucson. Yeah, yeah. Here in Arizona, some dumbass, some absolute piece of garbage <laughs> stole the tests. And I don't, I'm not a medical professional by any means, so I have no idea what administering the test looks like. But I do know there's such a huge turnaround time with the results. Yeah. That I can't imagine that what he stole was something he was able to use. Yeah, that's because I told my mom about it. She was like, "Well, I'm pretty sure like a doctor has to like yeah put it in like a machine and like test it or, or something. send it to a lab probably. Yeah. And well, like, how's he gonna do that if he stole them? Yeah, yeah, I, that was wild. I, I, I hate that. I was like, of course it happened right down the road, but um, yeah, I think they've just figured out a new test or they're working on a new one that the turnaround time is only 45 minutes. I yeah. guess it'd make a little bit more sense to steal those. But, uh, but yeah, that was a weird one. And then uh, there, was, uh, uh, there was something that happened just today when I was setting up for today's podcast. A lady w and her children, two or three children, walked by the door, and I kid you not, she was obsessively hawking them to stay six feet away from her and six feet away from each other. <laughs> I was, and she was super what? serious. I thought it was a joke when I heard like the first couple lines, but I went and watched out the door, and she was like, no, back up. And then made them all walk in a single file line. They live together, though. Yeah, I was like, they're going home now to play, and I guess they're all going to their rooms. I I'm, guess she's trying to teach them to be mindful of that with other people, too. So like, if you do it at home, maybe you'll do it out in public as well. Like, she's just teaching them. But, like, if she's just, like, not wanting to get sick from her kids, that's a terrible, <laughs> terrible plan. <laughs> Um, I probably just got the strangest question <laughs> we've ever gotten. Do I answer this? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Tom from MySpace says, Tindo, have you ever not made it to the bathroom? I've never had a mishap, but I know people who have. Um, once. <laughs> it's happened to me once. Recently, or? It's been about two years ago. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I'll get, yeah. You you are not thirty yet, so I'll give you that one. Yeah, I, just, I feel like that happens to people. Like, it, there's no shame oh, in it. There's I, no reason to be upset about I it. I still it's have no like, explanation. Listen, okay, I'm sick. <laughs> um, I don't know if if we really want to get into the full story, but I was when we first moved here. So I guess almost three years ago, yeah. I drove Uber very briefly because my car was brand new, and. Uh, and it was just I tried I didn't I didn't really do well because I just couldn't couldn't quite stand it because I've never had a, a a service job of any kind yeah so I I haven't had I mean I I don't get me wrong the job that I've done for years and the video work that I do I work with people but I'm usually a manager or a boss I'm in charge of things and 
just not used to directly being in service to people. Just to be completely honest. So that's why Uber didn't work out for me. But somewhere in the middle of Ubering, I, I picked up three bros. <laughs> they were straight from, I kid you not, they were leaving their initiation for a uh, uh, fraternity. fraternity. Yeah. And they were just hyped that they were it was they were in and saw they were talking yeah. about parties they were gonna go to now and stuff and they were nice enough to me and stuff, but like I felt this grumbly in my tumbly while I was driving <laughs> them home. And I kid you not and then I I felt that like you know that feeling yeah. when you're about to go. It came out of nowhere. And <laughs> and so I, I dropped them off and almost as soon as they got out of the car, I I released the Kraken. <laughs> You get where I'm going? Yeah, I understand what you're putting down. And so, and it, luckily, I was probably a mile and a half or even less than that from our home. And this is where we live in the apartment before you moved out here. Yeah. And that apartment sits on a lake. And so for the <laughs> brief... I don't like this is going. <laughs> For the briefest of moments, for the very, very briefest of moments before I actually got home, I thought, I guess I'm just going to jump in the lake. Because, like, what do I do? It was... I was sitting in a giant puddle of... You gotta just throw the whole human out. <laughs> I know, it was... And, I, and I, still to this day, I don't know why it happened. I don't know what I could have eaten. I don't know what went wrong with my body. But no, no so I got there and I got home and uh, I, was, I was wearing a pair of black bas- Walmart and one basketball shorts. You know the ones? Yeah. And so what I did was I got, I got out of the car. I, I sat there in the car and I like bunched up the bottom of my pants. <laughs> And I held them like this, and I walked. Now, mind you, I'm not even telling the funny version of this, and she's about to die of laughing. Look at the camera, Hannah. <laughs> and so I, I walk. Now, mind you, this we live on the fourth floor of this four-story apartment complex. So I walk in. I walk into the elevator. Don't tell me you took the stairs. Okay. Yeah, you know, I went up an <laughs> elevator by myself, and luckily I came across no one when it yeah. happened. Absolutely no one. What like, was your plan, though, if you had? Apologize well, profusely. I'm sure it smelled bad. It smelled really bad. I remember yeah. this day. Well, <laughs> well, I'm sure it smelled really bad, but like, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I tell you what, it, what, what probably it felt bad. I, it, it, it felt so like it felt like I was sitting in a bucket of shit, like physically or emotionally. Well, I think it was more emotionally because that's like I was like, am I 90? I just shat myself. So. I think it felt worse because I got upstairs and got them all off and wiped myself and turned the shower on. And I, then I remember looking down and being like, it was, it was a little bit of poo-poo. It <laughs> felt like I was swimming in it. And, and the, it felt like enough that I thought I had to do this, right? Yeah. But it never even remotely came out of my underwear. So it yeah. was nowhere near as bad as it felt. But I guess just like it, 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 it actually coming out, like it just felt like so much. So... <laughs> I just remember whenever you came back, when you came home that day, you were like, um, I got, I got a problem. And then I was like, okay. And so you went inside and cleaned up yourself, and I went to the car to go make sure that it was <laughs> clean. And it smelled so bad in there. Yeah, I, I don't know what to tell you. And I, the worst part about the whole thing was like, I don't, I, like you're, I was 27 probably. 26, 27 yeah, years probably. old. And I was like, what's wrong with me? Do I need to go to the doctor? <laughs> I've never been sick in my life. I've barely had a cold. Like, yeah. how does this happen? Anyways, um, thanks for that terrible question, Tom, <laughs> from MySpace. Um, he says, I've had close calls, but uh, I'll be 30 in a couple months. But so far, lucky. Yeah. You know, it happens, I guess. I guess it starts to happen. But I've never, I've never come close otherwise. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I... I I feel bad for people that it happens r- regularly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, what were we talking about before we got onto that? Julie said, got rid of that new car so real fast. <laughs> sure did. Super sure did. Um, it was a brand new car, too. It was in really nice shape, but. It's now deceased. Yeah, that car's ripped. But, uh, but yeah. Uh, why did you ask that question? Do I look like I shit myself <laughs> regularly? Maybe you just, you know, 
trying to get to know you. Or yeah, well, that's the problem with this podcast is I'll answer just about anything you ask me. Um, all right, so let's move on and talk a little bit about movies and a little bit about TV shows. I want to know what you guys are watching. So just to start out, throw out, you know, if you're stuck at home and you're not doing much, or if not, even if you're still working regular, what are you guys watching right now? Uh, I mean, I already gave away, I already buried the lead here. We, we've been watching Shit's Creek. What have you been watching? Uh, I watched the new Netflix movie, uh, Spencer Confidential. Okay. I was expecting a lot, and it did not live up to what I was expecting. No, really? So, I'd give it like a 6 out of 10. So, not great at all? No. No? I mean, it, it's worth watching, I guess, but... Well, I can't tell you, like, I have learned for sure with episodic television stuff to, like... To definitely give things like that multiple seasons. Because just like Shit's Creek, the first season's good for mm-hmm. what it is, but like it's really good now that yeah. we're into season four. It's I would even say great yeah. into season four. There's a couple new characters that are just that just make it really, 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 really great. So, you know. Yeah. Uh what happened to the car? Uh, it's <laughs> you setting, don't want to know. Well, no, it's it's it was fine for years. We drove it multiple cross country trips, but it's actually sitting in our parking lot right now. We had to tow it home last week. Uh, it blew up. I don't know if I've blown a head gasket or what, but there's something terribly wrong with it. I haven't, because of all the mess that's going on right now. I, I haven't crawled underneath it. I haven't taken it apart to to gauge the damage. But actually, as of about a week ago, it's it's in not in great shape. And I, I really need to figure out what's wrong with it because. Our van costs so much to drive around town. We really need our car back. We're spending so much in, in gas money. But anyways, uh, let's see. I'm watching Daybreak on Netflix. Uh, are you familiar with that one? Uh, yeah, I've seen. I've considered watching it, but there's other things I. Oh, is it an outbreak type that are movie? Above my list. Yeah. Okay, I see. I see now. Uh, yeah, I. I'm. You know what? To be honest with you, I. The way that I consume media and the way that I watch TV is a lot has been a lot different simply since we started this YouTube channel. I used to I used to watch a few movies a week. Uh, Hannah and I have always went to the movies a bunch, and uh, I'd say since we started this channel four or five months now, we've been to the movies like twice. Star Wars came out that time, so we went course, to Star Wars twice. Yeah, we went to Star <laughs> Wars twice. That's it. And, like, I have a, a hard drive full of digital movies that I keep, like my favorite films that I usually watch on repeat. But we've just been in a different place since starting this channel. So, like, I, I'm just saying that to say we certainly haven't been watching as much. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Uh, but this show is the first time we've sat down and watched a show together. Well, I, I'm going to lie to you again. Miss Maisel came out during that five-month period, uh, the new season, on, on Amazon. We watched that. But other than that, and now Shit's Creek, I can't think of anything we've sat down and watched together. Yeah. Um, which is why I want to do this today, because I want, like, like we have a little bit more time on our hands than we have had, so we're going to sit down and watch some movies. So I'm definitely looking for some suggestions, etc. I've started rewatching Prison Break. Yeah? It was on Netflix, like, when it was coming out on Fox. Does it hold up? Oh, it's really good. Is it? Yeah. I remember, I didn't watch that show obsessively, but my brother at the time when it was new dated a girl, and they watched it, um, and I watched some with them a few weeks in a row yeah. here and there, and, and I remember it being good. It's probably top five TV shows. That's how I consumed it, too. My mom and my sister watched it all the time, and I would just come in on a few episodes. It looked good, but it's one of those shows that you can't really watch, you know, just an episode or two and know really what's going on, so... Yeah, you definitely really start from the beginning. Yeah, well, they they, they made a new series, a new uh, season, right? Very recently, didn't they? Uh, I'm not aware of that. Okay, or maybe they're <laughs> still working on it. Maybe that's something yeah. that's coming up. But that kind of era, almost, honestly, I'm thinking a little bit more before that. But like something from back then or a little earlier that that we tried to rewatch a few months ago now, before we started the channel, probably five or six months ago, we tried to watch some House. Oh, and Hannah yeah. actually watched several seasons, didn't you? I did, yeah. I was like, I am going to do it. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to watch all of it. And I got through probably three seasons, and I was like, this is repetitive. Let's move on. Right. Well, that's kind of uh, that's kind of how, like, it was good. Don't get me wrong. House comes on. The dialogue's great. The plot of individual episodes is usually great. But it is like the epitome of episodic television. 
Yeah. There you you often go ten episodes without any further furthering of the seasonal plot. You know what I mean? Yeah. They are self-contained. They are episodes that can be thrown out. I almost want to go one of these days and edit down House yeah. to like uh, three hours of just the stuff that moves the plot just so you yeah. can see it. Yeah. Like, it, it's a fluffy show. It's good. I'm not hating on it. So I, I, when I asked that question about Prison Break, I kind of wondered if it would hold up. But now that I think about it, it is very like twisty, turny. Oh, it's, yeah. Every episode's pretty wild. Yeah. I'd say that the 100 and Parks and Rec are like, Three in my top five. I I didn't watch much of the hundred either, but I've, I I get I've seen some of it. I yeah. remember it being. We started good. together a while ago, but never finished. Yeah, I, I I need to go back and finish it up. My favorite TV show is probably um, Peaky Blinders. Peaky Blinders, yeah. Yes. I I probably well my my absolute favorite TV show. We're gonna I'm gonna get back to your comments here in a second. Uh, my absolute favorite TV show is The West Wing. Uh, very political drama. Uh, I, Martin Sheen star of it. I love it. I love everything about it. I love every actor in it. And I have watched it all the way through eight or nine times now. And I've been meaning to start it over again. Because I was doing it about twice a year. For, or two or three times a year. But I, the last time I finished it right after... Uh, I finished it. It's been a few years. I need to. I want to I wanted to start watching it again. But I, I have it. And, I, and honestly, I thought about doing that after we finished Shit's Creek. But I think we're going to sit around and watch a bunch of movies first catch up on some movies we haven't seen for the yeah. last few years um but let's see what are you guys watching i finished up castlevania on netflix also lock and key is pretty good i've been hearing good things about lock and key have you heard of this one yeah i saw the little like preview that netflix plays yeah looked interesting that looks pretty good watching all the 99 cent in Yunasha dvds from zia that's awesome i can appreciate that i i got my first apartment at 18 i was just turning 19 i think uh and it was this little apartment above this house, and it was I thought it was really cool, but I'd never lived out on my own, and it turned out to be really lonely. But I'll tell you what I did to spend most of my time, and I wish I could remember where I bought them, but I think I had four full seasons of Inu Asha on DVD, and I just watched them on repeat every day after work. Uh, that was how I watched Inu Asha. I just stumbled across the DVDs. Uh, that's awesome. Jason said he watched the new Sonic movie. Uh, oh, how was that? I... I, we were trying and trying to go to the theater to see the new Sonic movie because I've been really excited about it, but then they shut down about the time we were actually really serious yeah, about it. Yeah, we were in it. Kentucky when it first came out. We were going to go with a friend and their kids, but that didn't work. And then we were going to go with one of our parents, but that didn't work. And so it just never happened. Yeah, and let's see. Just watched Invisible Man. It was pretty good. Is there like a new... I've seen a couple posts about that recently, too. Is there like a new Invisible Man movie or something? Because I, I definitely like can think of the old black and white one. Uh, 94, JJ says that uh, Prison Break is incredible. I'm planning on watching Invisible Man. Season 5 was a couple of years ago. Uh, the new, like the newest one, the, they made a new season of Prison Break. Like, I, I remember that happening. Or, or maybe I'm from an alternative timeline. I don't know. <laughs> Got merged with this one. Uh, my absolute favorite show of all time is Buffy the Vampire Sir. So did you check out those cardboard cutouts we bought? We have three. We've got Angel, the other dude, and then Buffy herself. But the other dude and Buffy don't have the stands on the back to hold them up. And so I need to make new ones. Uh, love, watch, are you talking about Stepford and Sons? Is that what you're talking about? Steptoe and Son, or is that something I've never heard of? Uh, just watched Spencer Confidential with Mark Wahlberg on Netflix last night. Pretty good. Yeah, it looks funny. There, doesn't it have Post Malone in it? Or did I make that up too? Yeah. Yeah. Walking Dead fan. You know what? I, you know what I think it was when I watched um, Prison Break? I think it was because I was weekly meeting my brother and his girlfriend to watch Walking Dead with them. Hmm. And then we would also watch the most recent TiVo version our episode of Prison Break. I think that's how I watched it. Yeah. So it's kind of funny we talk about those together. Uh, my girlfriend and I are rewatching Buffy right now. That's another good question. How does that hold up? Um, I actually have no experience with Buffy whatsoever except for being really young when it was new and catching a few episodes here and there, as you do when you're a kid. Yeah. Uh, but I have, I, I'll tell you what, about every actor in the show, you know, ended up in shows that I took really seriously as a kid. Like, uh, the the other guy in the cutout, those cardboard cutouts we bought. I'm so bad with names, guys. Um, he ended up being one of the villains in Smallville. You know, everybody from that show went on to do a lot of stuff. 
Um, so I looked it up. Prison, the season five of Prison Break came out in 2017. Okay. And apparently there's talks of season six, but I guess it's taking a while. Um, it may come out this year. Did you see that newest season? Yeah, I've seen it all. Okay. But well, I'm just rewatching it now. Right. But uh, yeah, season six is supposed to come out sometime soon ish. Uh, let's see here. Well, the thing that I want to talk about is The Walking Dead. Did you, were you part of the craze? Did you watch a lot of it whenever it first came out? Either I, one of you? I obsessively watched the first season when it came out and then casually watched, <clears throat> sorry, casually watched the second one with my brother, but like, I wouldn't be surprised if I haven't seen anything from season three on. So not. Not super, but why? I wasn't part of I wasn't part of the craze, but whenever it came out on Netflix, I started watching it all through. I don't know what it is about that show, but like it gives me nightmares. I don't get <laughs> I don't get nightmares from things that I watch, but like if I watch The Walking Dead, I will have a zombie dream that night. So it's like well, I, I really liked the show. I get Minecraft nightmares. So. <laughs> nightmares the or Endermans dreams. after you. They're off to nightmares. Like I'm stuck in a one by one, just can't get out. <laughs> It's the worst. Oh, I'm being serious. Like they're not that bad though, but well, it's dark. I've tried to explain it before. Do you know? Do you, does this not happen to anybody else when you do so much, so much of one thing in your waking hours that when you go to sleep, your subconscious mind tries to yeah. pump in what it's been doing? Yeah. That's that happens to me a lot. When I, sometimes when I sh- am on a job and I, I, you know, this is from my old job, but like when I would do 15 hour days of video work with a camera right here in my face, I would often have dreams that were almost like I was dreaming while looking through a camera lens. Yeah, you know, my brain does weird stuff like that. Um, let's see here, what did I miss? It's an old TV series from I, th- <laughs> uh, Dean, I think, okay, the less, Steptoe and, oh, so it's an old British TV show. We might have to give that a look. Uh, Steptoe and Son is the name of the show this guy's talking about. I've never heard of this personally, but... Uh, looks great. Yeah, no, it looks good. Hannah and I watched some uh, very specific British television. Have you guys... Ooh, I'm glad I thought of this. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, keeping Up Appearances. It's no longer on Netflix, or else I would, I would uh, say you should. No, I would demand that you go watch it right now if it were still on Netflix, but it's not... Old British television show. Doesn't look quite as old as this one that we just looked at. Uh, the funniest television, I would argue, the funniest TV show ever to air on TV. I don't know how the how the BBC or the British TV uh, people do it, but they come up with some of the best stuff. Uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer was a good show. I I I, I definitely know that it was. Cause there's a lot of people that I like worship in the you know in the movie TV world that also like herald that show so I have no doubts it's good but I just kind of wonder how it holds up because like didn't we didn't we sit down and try to watch uh, an episode of Sabrina TJ, uh, Teenage Witch once and it was just like the most horrific <laughs> thing we ever saw I don't just, remember that but I can imagine it was yeah it doesn't hold up because like you remember that cat being like oh yeah he was great this realistic was... little monster and it's so, so bad it's so bad <laughs> Um, um, I just looked it up. You can actually watch Keeping Up Appearances full episodes on YouTube. Can you really? Yeah. All right, well, go watch it right now. Cancel. <laughs> leave this stream and go watch Keeping Up Appearances. Uh, you won't regret it. Let's see. Didn't really watch Walking Dead either until it came out on Netflix. Yeah, that's what, uh, Hannah, Hannah's definitely with you there. The Walking Dead can be hard going at times, but I feel committed to it now. It, yeah. It's still on, right? I don't know. I'll look that up too. Yeah, look that up too. I mean, I, if not, like maybe that spinoff still is, but uh, a good virus movie or outbreak, the flu, contagion, Resident Evil. So pretty much just pick a term that has to do with outbreaks, and there's a movie called that, is what you're saying. Only Fools and Horses is a classic British TV comedy as well. Very, very funny. I'll look that one up too. Battlestar Galactica is good. That's another one. Uh, you know, that's another one that was out at that specific time. Like I'm probably nine or ten years old. Yeah. Well. There was a Battlestar Galactica. It turns out there was. It turns out Battlestar Galactica has been around longer than I knew that it did. There's a like super old series of it. Because hmm. I found a really old Battlestar Galactica VHS the other day at, at a thrift store. But, anyways, that's another one I'd be kind of curious to see if it held up or not. Um, but, yeah. I 
think it's still on. Yeah, I, I thought it, I thought it was, but like, gosh, it seems crazy that it's been on for a decade. Yeah, it seems absolutely crazy. Just finished watching the new Sabrina on Sunday, so you're talking about the new one on Netflix, right? I bet that's great. Uh, I, I haven't really been drawn to watch it, but I, I would definitely entertain it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the 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 original Sabrina, like I watched it religiously when I was a kid. I thought it was the greatest thing. Have you ever watched it at all? The uh, Sabrina Teenage Witch. Yeah, I don't think so. If I turned I really it on like right it. now, you'd be weirded out. Like it's pretty weird. <laughs> It's out yeah. there, man. It's really out there. I tried to watch one episode of the new Sabrina on Netflix. I really want to, like, actually give it a shot, but I, I don't know. I'm, I get in these weird moods where I start a TV show, and I'm like, I just am not in the right mindset to, to dive into this right now, and it seemed a little too juvenile for what I was into at the moment. We had just been watching documentaries and things <laughs> like that, so I'm like, I can't turn my brain off right now. <laughs> So, it, was it good? Did you like it? Yeah, I, well, I, I don't know. He hasn't said yet. Were you watching the new one on Netflix, or were you re-watching the old ones? Oh, you said the new Sabrina. Yeah. Never mind. I, I sure wish I could read. Uh, MacGyver's is an old one. It's the best. You know, the, that era of TV, I, I liked MASH a lot. Did, did you ever watch MASH? Uh, I watched a few episodes here and there. Yeah. It was one of those shows that was always on. Yeah. No matter what, if you're flipping through channels in 1998, <laughs> not that it was even new in 98, but yeah. it, it was always reruns in 98. I never watched MASH. I watched Andy Griffith, and I watched um, Matlock. Matlock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had a good childhood. Um, I Cheers on Netflix. Did, did you... Were we talking about Cheers the other day? Yeah. yeah. When, uh, my parents were... Because my mom watched it as a kid. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we, there was a few episodes on, like, local TV. And uh, I saw it was on Netflix. Started Maybe. watching it. It's pretty good. Are you, like, really far into it? or I'm, like, season three. But. Yeah. Yeah, that was another one. You know, that was something my dad watched regularly when I was younger, too. Uh, but let's see. Movie-wise, though, like, seriously, like, we're talking about tonight. Like, let's cook dinner and then go watch. Uh, let's go watch a movie. And we just are, like, completely at a loss as to what to watch because... I, I was trying to illustrate earlier that we've just for so long been in such a we we movies were such a big part of our life, but for some reason when we started this channel it was definitely something that kinda got brushed aside and I just you know, there's a huge difference in been watching three day binge watching three days worth of T V yeah. and then sitting down for a self contained movie. It's just there's different pacing, there's different you know, and, and, and movies have always been the format that I personally prefer opposed to binge watching longer TV and uh, I just haven't been getting that fix I haven't been getting my fix of that but I want to but honest to God if we go watch a movie tonight it's probably just gonna be re-watching something I've seen a hundred times just because like staring at the TV staring at the TV at the Netflix trying to pick a movie to watch for me is like just staring into the void <laughs> you know, like I know, I know. There's always a joke, or there's always memes about like you and your your your, your significant other trying to sit at the TV and find a movie to watch, or to find something to watch, and then yeah. you end up, you know, sitting there for an hour before you find something. That's not normally real to me, because like if we're putting something on in the background, I turn on YouTube or I turn on Netflix and click play on Old Faithful, you know, yeah. Office episode or something. Uh, but like. I just I'm sitting here now. I'm telling you, I'm sitting here now, dreading the idea of going and finding a movie to watch, which is why I rewatch some of my favorite films so many times. Like I'm just, I don't know why it's in my head right now, but I'm sitting here thinking about uh, the Prestige, Christopher mm -hmm. Nolan's The Prestige with Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale. Like I'd love to go watch that right now, or Punch Drunk Love with uh, Adam Sandler in it. Like that's just what comes to my brain. Let's see, you guys are still talking about a bunch of classic TV shows I see here out of the corner of my eye. Uh, Walker, Texas Ranger is still a classic show. I haven't seen that since I was a kid for sure. Um, 94 JJ, I've actually seen every episode of Torchwood. Uh, when I got really into Doctor Who back in 2012, 2013, and I, I caught up to all the, uh, on all the newest episodes at that time, I wanted more, I went and watched Torchwood. I quite enjoyed it. It was a good one. Uh, oh, I wish it was something they were still making. Uh, let's see. Home Improvement is the best comedy. I watched that as, a lot as a kid, too. Knight Rider. 
Goodwin Battle Stars from the late seventies. See, that's what I'm talking about. So, what was it? Battle Star S. What is it? Something Gate Deep Space Nine or something? There was, of course, Battle Star was on still in like late nineties, early two thousands when I was a kid, and that's what I was really familiar with. When I think Battle Star, that's what I think of. But I never quite paid enough attention to it uh, to know that it originated in the seventies. So the other day when I found a VHS that was a 1970s episode of Battlestar, I was like, what? You know, because it's not, it's just, that's a show I definitely have barely ever even scratched the surface on. That's what I was trying to explain, but I didn't do a particularly great idea. Umbrella Academy on Netflix was interesting. Did you watch it? Yeah. Yeah. That's the only thing I know about it other than Gerard Way wrote it, I guess. The My Chemical Romance dude. Is that true? I don't know about that. I, I just I hate sharing this information and being wrong, but I'm pretty sure he wrote it. It's his show. Um, other than that, the only thing I know about it is what you told me about when you watched it. And I, yeah. I, whenever Patrick's watching TV and he gets to giggling about stuff, I'll poke my head <laughs> in his room and just see what's going on. And so I saw some clips. Is that the show with the monkey that's like yeah. the butler or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I that's, thought that was cool. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. <laughs> I, that, that was probably one I would watch. Uh, what are you showing me? Yeah, he wrote it. Okay, Gerard Way wrote it. Uh, I was a My Chemical Romance fan back in the day. I mean, I guess I still am. <laughs> but uh, you need to watch Captain Scarlet TV series. It's a puppet. Hey, I'm into that. I love me some puppets for sure. Uh, the new Sabrina is okay, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's too weird, plus season three was bad. Uh, then good, I probably won't watch it. Good to know, though. Thank, uh, thanks for letting us know not to waste our time. If you like sci-fi, Terminator, that's old school. I love me some Terminator. I was, for some reason, I, I quit Facebook, all right? Let me just throw that out there. I kind of quit Facebook, just too much negativity, and I quit it about five or six months ago. But I have, I still have it on my phone, and I did get on it today. I do love Facebook for scrolling through videos. So I was just yeah. watching Facebook videos, and a bunch of James Cameron interviews came up who, or, who directed uh, Terminator. And, uh, and for whatever reason, I'm just saying it's funny you bring that up because... Quite coincidentally, I've been sitting here thinking really hard about rewatching the old Terminators because I never did see that newest one, which I would like to watch. So yeah. I need to rewatch some of those. I feel I like I've seen it with how many times we watched that preview. Yeah, well, yeah. It's, <laughs> Every single time we're in the theater, it's the same preview. For Terminator, yeah. Yes. Uh, ever seen Martyrs? I don't think I have. No. Uh, OMG, I used to love Doctor Who, but I haven't seen the new Doctor yet. I actually, I'm, I'm almost ashamed to say I haven't seen the newest Doctor yet either. I watched all of Capaldi's run, and to be honest with you, I love Matt Smith. When I first started watching Doctor Who, it was right before Matt Smith was announced. Right before it. So like, I finished all of Tennant's Doctor Who run. And they announced Matt Smith as the new Doctor. I was like, "This is great. He's so cool. he's uh, you know." Or I was well. I guess I was apprehensive, as a lot of people are, when there's a new James Bond, there's a new Doctor Who. But I, I watched Matt Smith, and I was sh- sh- smitten. I was like, "This is so good." And uh, so it was a little bit hard for me to get into Capaldi, but then when he got you know stretched his wings, it was really good. So I imagine by now, I think they're on like season two or three of the new Doctor. I bet she's doing great now. I just as I've already stated in this podcast, like I just haven't been watching anything. So I need to go watch those episodes. Does anybody know if there's any way you can stream the newest episodes of Doctor Who right now? Because there's just no other way for me to get my hands on them. Um, let's see. <laughs> Tom said I left but I'm 13 minutes behind, but I have to say I love the new Sonic movie. Well, we're still talking about me pooping my pants. So <laughs> That was like 40 minutes ago. <laughs> Lock and Key was okay. Talk about fluff. That show is fluffy. Well, that's the thing. If is Lock and Key a Netflix show, or yeah. is it is it strictly Netflix, or did it air on TV? First? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's strictly Netflix. Okay. Well, that's kind of that's kind of interesting if it is that fluffy because mm-hmm. you expect TV from 2005, <laughs> 2010 to be fluffy because you were watching one episode a day for 25 weeks in a row. You yeah. know what I mean? And there's just not a lot of ways to to really fill that much storyline on a network TV show without certain kinds of fluff. And I don't want to make fluff a completely derogatory term. Every fluffy episode of House is still good on its own, but it is hard to watch 25 of them in a row. It was not meant to be watched that way. It was meant to be watched once a week. When you watch it once a week, you don't notice that fluff so much. I know this is obvious, but I'm I'm just throwing this out there. 
But for a new Netflix show to be that fluffy, I'm quite surprised. But I guess it happens. Have you seen Shot of the Dead? Yes, I have. Big fan of those guys. Um, really big fan. I actually, one of my favorite movies ever is uh, Hot Fuzz. I know a lot of people's favorite uh, favorite movie by those guys. I guess is that Edgar Wright? Um, I guess I could Google it. I think it's Edgar Wright. Yep, Edgar Wright. Um, my fav- One of my top like 10 favorite movies is Hot Fuzz. And I think a lot of people, when they pick their favorite movie by those guys, is usually Shaun of the Dead. But I don't know why Hot Fuzz just tickles me. Tickles me pink. So, yes, I've definitely seen it, though. Uh, if looking for a good anime to watch, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is good. I had a roommate in college before Patrick was my roommate. And we... He was very obsessive about watching anime, so he would play, he would blow through a season of anime a day, just endlessly. I mean, he was just sitting there, no matter what, what I did, when I walked in, this guy was watching anime. And so I would pay attention to some of the animes when he watched uh, the English versions, the, the dubbed instead of the subbed versions, uh, simply because he had a TV that was this big on the other side of the room. So it wasn't, if it was, if it was subbed, I couldn't see the subtitles, so I just would ignore those. And I probably paid a good, uh, paid attention to a good half of the original season of Full Metal Alchemist. Uh, and it was good. It was very good. They made a, uh, we, was that the recent one? They made a live action movie of it. We watched that too, which was really interesting. Uh, do not watch the new Doctor Who. It is bad. Well, uh, you'll have to forgive me if I don't take your advice on that specifically because Doctor Who is such a subjective thing that almost half of the people that ever watch a new series of Doctor Who, they say it's bad because they're so stuck on the old ones. That's just the nature of Doctor Who. Um, I, I can't tell you how many times people tell me how much they hate Matt Smith's run of Doctor Who and how bad it is. I have to think it's some of the greatest TV ever made. So I'm definitely going to watch it. I might end up agreeing with you that it's bad, but let's talk about that again once I, I finally watch it. Uh, let's see. Terminator Dark Fate isn't the best. That's the new one. Yeah, I, I feel like every time, I feel like every few years there's been a Terminator movie for the last hundred years. And it never seems like they're that great, but I definitely want to give that one the time of day because it's got all the, uh, the OGs in it. Um, yeah, if you watch it, the whole episode has nothing to do with the plot. Then the last five minutes they get back to it. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's just such the de- a definition of 2010 episodic TV. I hate that. It's not my favorite thing. I can't remember the name of it right now, but there was that movie that came out on Thanksgiving that had Chris Evans in it and all those big names. That oh, was the, the murder Brian mystery Johnson, thing. Knives Out. Knives Out, that's what it was. I wanted to watch that so bad. I still really want to watch it, but the funny thing about the movie <laughs> is that we were sitting at a pizza joint that we really like here, and this girl sitting at the table next to us literally explained point by point exactly what the movie is so i'm like well i already know what happens because this girl's talking so loud so we haven't watched it yet and i really want to watch that one yeah we'll probably just wait a while until we hopefully forget but i think when she when we overheard that conversation i realized that the movie anyways was like i don't want to say a parody but like a a retelling of the train what's the train movie the murder oh. mystery on the train um, or the orient express yes that murder it's on a, the orient yeah express. it's essentially that movie anyways so once you realize that you already know the plot but anyways yeah. um let's see anybody seen manimal super cheesy sci-fi series from the 80s i have vague memories of that but i don't i don't think i can speak on that one uh color out of space is a much watch really good i'll have to some of the the good thing about these podcasts is that you guys' comments remain, and I'll definitely be able to check them uh, whenever we're done and go go back and Google some of these. Yes, because they like the old Doctor, and I like Matt Smith, Doctor the Best, but most people don't like the new one. Yeah, I mean, that uh, happens every time. There's, listen, I don't, I don't want to go on and on about Doctor Who, but there's this guy on my Facebook. Actually, there's this guy on my Facebook that um, about the only thing I know about him is our mutual like of Doctor Who. Every new episode, I hate it. Mm-hmm. Every new season, every new incarnation of the Doctor, I hate it, I hate it. And I always read it. He always gets around to watching the stuff before me, so I always get a little bit of spoilers reading what he has to say about it. But then I kid you not, he's just the most reactive person I know because then he's always like, oh, it's like, I went back and rewatched the first season. It was great. 
it was just like there's there's only one thing in the world I don't want to hear anything about. And it's pretty much Doctor Who because I've just never found it easy to have a conversation. I remember Hannah and I sitting downstairs during a theater production in college, and this was when Matt Smith's like last season was about to air. And this chick was just going on and on about how she was like, she has not seen one episode of Doctor Who. Mm -hmm. She has not seen a single episode. She refuses to watch of, it. Of Matt Smith's Doctor Who. What did no, I say? Just of Doctor Who. Yeah, yeah, of Matt Smith's <laughs> Doctor Who. And she, she was like, I refuse to watch it. Matt, uh, David Tennant will for always and ever be my only Doctor Who. I don't ever want to see a new one. And she's like, I think it's stupid that they replace him. Just going on and on about it. And I was like, if they're, and, and like, I, it was really hard to talk to her about it because I was like, you've just missed the point. The point of this show is that it reincarnates. The point of this show is that it changes. The point of this show is that it swings so wildly far from the last one. That is the essence of the show. That has been the essence of the show since 1964. You know, and so to like miss that so bad that you won't even give a new doctor. I don't want to turn this into the Doctor Who episode, but I feel very strongly about this thing. I think I, it's just such a cool concept because there's no other TV show in the world that, I mean, maybe there is. I just don't know a lot of television. But, like, <laughs> that, that keeps the same premise but, like, purposely just does its own thing all the time. I just, I feel like appreciating yeah. the art of that is... If you like Doctor Who, you have to appreciate the art of that yeah. and respect what it is and just roll with it. Yeah, people people don't like change. And if you don't like change, you're not going to like okay. Doctor Who because that show changes. Uh, Jason says he's never seen Doctor Who. I, I, it's not that easy to get into. Uh, it's definitely a different kind of TV show. Simon Pegg has a TV series called Space. I'd love to watch that. Love Simon Pegg. Love everything he does, especially the movies he does with uh, Edgar Wright. But... That's kind of who that guy in Schitt's Creek looks like, actually. Now who? Simon that. Pegg? Yeah, doesn't he? The Which? Patrick character? The, what? The boyfriend of, of David now? We were thinking about it last time. I mean, I guess he's got a funny shaped head, yeah. but I don't think he looks like... Anyways. You have to watch The Stranger. That's a good show on Netflix series based off a Harlan Coben book. Um, is that the one? I think we watched it. Is the guy from Hello. Dexter? Hello. Hello. Uh, is he yes, the lead I'm actor in that one? I think we watched it. And we only watched it because How are you? I have read, no, I wouldn't say I've read all of Harlan Coben books, but I've read most of his books. I'm a huge Harlan Coben fan. Uh, I love the way that he writes. As a matter of fact, uh, when I was going through, I, when I, I was a uh, creative writing major in, uh, in college, Rip. Uh, yes, but my, my biggest you. writing influence was Harlan Coben because I was always so obsessed with his books. Um, but I think that's the one. I think that's the one. I completely agree with you, Tim Bro. Word. If you like ghost hun haunting shows, try a haunting. It's an awesome show. I'm not so much into that, but Hannah's super into that kind of thing. So we'll definitely have to write that one down. Never seen a single episode of Who. Again, you know, the longer that Who goes on, since it's been going on since 1960s, like just it's, or maybe even 50s, but like forever. It's hard to get into, so I don't know that it's something I'd recommend. I'm right there with the low-profile gamer. Uh, the only doctor I know is Pepper, lol. I, again, 100%. You, you like some Dr. Pepper? Oh, yeah. Uh, Space is really good. Edgar Wright was involved in it. Well, then it's probably great just because he was involved. Have you seen the Orville? No, I haven't. Um, my, Redenbacher? Uh, huh? Redenbacher? No, it's, it's like a oh. Star Trek ripoff, but the, the family guy, Seth MacFarlane, is the lead actor and i'll tell you what um i so my big my favorite youtube channel one of the people that i probably would say is most influential over me and my creative endeavors is adam savage from uh adam savage is tested on youtube also formerly of mythbusters fame uh and th i watch their podcasts pretty religiously and all of those guys on that channel talk about orville like it's the best thing ever so like uh, a lot of people who I trust really like Orville, so I, I will say I want to get around to watching it. And also, imagine that Seth MacFarlane, the lead actor of a of a Star Trek ripoff, you would immediately imagine it to be like Family Guy or something. I think you would it would be very easy to assume, but like apparently it's got its own really serious beats that like makes it like strangely good. It's like surprisingly good, I guess yeah. I should say. So I do want to get around to watching that. Um, can't wait for the next season. 
Yeah, I, I definitely want to see that. Yeah, me too. I have a lot of his books, and they're all really good. Every one of them, man. Every one of those books is great. He's such a great writer. Uh, of of all those new modern... Uh, go ahead. All those new modern... I'm trying to... All of a sudden, I'm blanking. But all these new modern suspense writers, and there's plenty of them we can sit here and talk about. I personally... Harlan Coben is, is my favorite. Uh, there's. I don't want to get too <laughs> uh, English nerdy with you. But there's a way in which, when you're writing, you, you separate thoughts. Most of us will do it with commas or just separate thoughts with sentences and periods and paragraphs. But there's very specific ways in which Harlan Coben will use uh, uh, punctuation to, to pause thoughts, interject new ones, and, and then go on. But the first time... All right. I'll tell you the first time I read a, a suspense novel whatsoever. It was probably... 2001, 2002, could have been late 90s, but it almost had to be, definitely had to be, it had to be early 2000s, but like 2002. My parents had long since been divorced. They'd probably been divorced for five years at this point. And uh, we were having visitation with my mother and she was living out in this little middle of nowhere town. I can't explain. It was Russellville, Kentucky. I don't know if anybody's watching from Kentucky. I've never heard of it. It's a tiny little town. It's a little strip. But she did live in, within walking distance from a, a little strip of town with like a dollar store and a bookstore. I went to this bookstore. There was a bright yellow book for a dollar. I think it was Tell No One. I think that was the one by Harlan Coben, one of his, one of his bigger, better selling books. And uh, I took it home and I read it all in one sitting at my mother's house and I was hooked. And all of a sudden when I went back to school that following semester, and, and again, we're talking like middle school or something, fifth, sixth grade, I wrote completely different. I was way more serious about being a writer. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's all thanks to Harlan Coben. Didn't mean to turn this into books, but there's been some good movies and shows made out of his books. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's... Uh, 23 Flavors of Awesomeness. Uh, Hannah likes Dr. Pepper, don't you? Yeah. I, I mean, I'll drink it. I'm not, if, there's a, if there's one set in front of me, I'll drink it for sure. I, but I... I don't usually go looking for it. It used to be my favorite soda, but now I'm definitely more a um, root beer person. But if there's no root beer, Dr. Pepper's my next best choice. Gotcha. Uh, fear Itself was a good horror show that was on NBC for only one season. It didn't last long. Star Trek ripoff that is better than the new Star Trek. Uh, you know, I don't, I, I don't doubt that, though I am heavily interested in watching the new Picard Star Trek series. I, I haven't got around to watch that either. Well, I haven't watched it because I'm not going to pay for a whole streaming service just for it. But I do want to see it. Speaking of horror movie, horror shows, um, Fear Itself, I, I would like to watch that. I do like a lot of horror stuff. One of my favorite ones that I watched recently was uh, House, on a Haunted, House on Haunted Hill, I think is what it's called. It's on Netflix. It was a very short... Um, season i didn't watch it with you i just kind of was it new yeah I, well there, there was like a really old the house on the haunted hill movie and then there was a remake in like the 90s so i'm assuming this is like a third remake but it's a series it, it was maybe, it, it was could probably be different um i'll look it up it's like it's something like that it's like house on haunted hill or hill house haunted or just some combination of those words but somebody had recommended it to me, and I watched it in, like, a day and a half. And it was actually pretty creepy. So I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. Well, uh, Tom, Tom's continued – well, everybody's continued to talk about uh, the new Star Trek. And they were talking about how the Orville is good and stuff. And uh, he, he mentioned how Seth MacFarlane cares about it. And that's, that's – I think that's probably one of the, the more interesting things about the show is that, like, we know Seth MacFarlane for Family Guy. You know, just pure nonsense, right? But he's actually a very talented actor – much less a very talented writer, much less a, a very talented performer. So, like, it's always really interesting in Hollywood when a specific person like Seth MacFarlane is given the chance to do what they want. I, You know, this is going to be a bad example, but, like, um, there was some weird behind-the-scenes stuff that allowed uh, uh, John Mayer to kind of go off and do whatever he wanted at some point in his music career. And I, I, I'm not, I've never been a huge John Mayer song. I probably couldn't name but a couple of his earlier hits. But at a certain point, he was able to kind of go off, and his record deal came to the point where he could do what he wanted. He made a basically made a country album. 
And now, I'm not a huge country fan either, but at the same time, I did grow up in the 90s listening to country music. So there's that certain era of country music that I am nostalgic for. And John Mayer, there's a couple of John Mayer albums that are just this like funky country thing going on that is just like really fantastic. So I, I said to say, some of the best TV, movies, music you'll ever see are with those really talented people finally get that one chance to do whatever they want. And I think that's what, that's what Orville is. They were just like, hey, Seth, what do you want to do? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So that makes it really neat. Um, two things. First yeah. thing is the Haunting of Hill House is what it was called. Okay, somebody not safe. Just said it. It's pretty close. But um, somebody just brought up American Horror Story. Oh, you've watched that a ton. I love American Horror Story. Has anyone, have either of you watched it at all? Never. I've never seen mm. an episode. Same. It's so good. It, it kind of does that, not exactly Doctor Who thing, but like... Each season is completely different oh, from the yeah, last, yeah. but it uses all the same characters. So, like, um, expl actresses explain and... this to me. American Horror Story and then, like, American Crime Story. That are, are, are made all, by the same person. Made by the same person with the same kind Similar of... Similar concept. Same cast, but kind of, completely yeah. different characters every time. Yes. Just, like, completely different stories and characters. That's really cool. Yeah, I mean, so to, good. At, like for an actor, I would imagine for actors that's pretty cool to like have a steady job, but then like every season you're just someone else. Yeah, it, and it, it gives you flexibility. You're not stuck in this TV show for ten years, and you're like, well, I can't leave. I'm the main character. Or they're just going to kill me off, and I won't have a job anymore. It's like I can go this season and do a movie, and then come back next season doing something completely different. I think that's really amazing. Lol, yeah. I just they were looking at us that whole time you were talking. <laughs> All right. Um, the Changeling is a great movie. The last season was so good. The eighties. Are you talking? The newest American Horror series was in the eighties. Was it? Or are we talking about something else here? Um, maybe they're talking about that. Yeah. Jason said the Haunting of Hill House used to be a, a three different movies or something like that. So I don't. I don't know. I haven't caught up on this. Well, I, I'm assuming the Hill House is different than the Haunted House of the Hill. I. <sighs> it gets complicated. I. I don't. I. I like horror movies, all right. You, if you can finally get me to sit down and watch them, I, I'll usually enjoy it. But like, I don't know, the jump scare kind of stuff doesn't really work on me, so I end up a little bit more bored with it. But I don't know. There's always been a few horror movies that always surprise you and end up being really good, and I can definitely appreciate those. But uh, I, I generally, personally, stay away from the horror stuff pretty much. Uh, Hannah, do you like being scared? Um. Kind of. You get I, nightmares I, though, right? You might as well just play Minecraft. <laughs> I don't actually get nightmares. It's just Walking Dead for some reason. But just, actually, my mom and I, whenever I was growing up, um, we watched horror movies constantly. It was just kind of our thing. Um, and I don't really watch them as much. Um, toward the end of us watching it, I would start to like overthink it a little bit too much. <laughs> and then I would like walk out of the house to go over to a friend's house and like be peeping over my shoulder. I'm like, this is this is a problem. So I do, I do, I do like horror-ish things, but I like specific stuff. Um, I like kind of creepy things with ghost stories and all that kind of stuff, but I don't really like like hack and slash stuff with yeah. lots of blood and gore. It's just unnecessary. <laughs> so you like you like scary, just not stabby stabby. Yeah. I like stabby stabby, Pat not scary. <laughs> <laughs> so so we shouldn't watch movies together. Uh, Soul Patch said, "What's cool about American Horror Story is that the newer seasons." tie into the older ones and give more context to the previous stories. I mean, that's cool. I mean, what a, what a cool, creative thing to tell those stories that way. I mean, it's about like, like it's really neat how television is changing. I mean, I'm going to say it's changing, but then you can always draw parallels to where they came from. Because, like, think about what Black Mirror is doing. You know, making, well, if you were to just say Black Mirror is making, have you watched any Black Mirror? Uh, yeah. Okay, well, if you were to just say Black Mirror is making individual episodes that are standalone. You can be like, well, Twilight Zone did that. Okay, well, yeah, Twilight Zone did. But, like, I, there's just, I, I'm not trying to say Black Mirror is new. It's just, but it's a beautiful evolution of where we came from. Because there's not a single episode of Black Mirror that you couldn't take to a film festival, any episode, to any film festival anywhere in the country, and put it out there as a film, as an independent film, short or otherwise, and not win everything. Yeah. It's like a series of great movies. Mm -hmm. And they put it out as a series, and I can't believe it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's how I feel about Black Mirror, and I haven't even watched it all. Yeah. I've had to watch it all, and then told me, about, uh, would talk about the episodes, and we would just go back and watch some of the more episodes. 
Which, this is going to be a really good addition for this conversation. Did you see the space episode? The guy has a virtual reality. It's a Star Trek episode. Star really Trek, so. yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, he made his own virtual reality where he could emulate Star Trek and literally yeah. just be, you know, Captain Kirk or whatever. But then he trapped digital DNA clones of his friends in it. Really, I mean, all episodes of, of it are weird. So it is very it, weird. It's not weird for me to say it was weird. So good, though. It was very good. So good. Um, the probably the one that stuck with me the most is the one where it was like a social media thing where where you got a personal score and each person could see your score and it, it really mattered in society yeah. and it's c- kind of something that China is doing a little bit. Yeah, well, to that scale. I, I would say most of the episodes that I did watch, they were certainly. Uh, post apocalyptic not post apocalyptic uh, dystopian yeah. vignettes through which we could possibly look at our future. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, uh, but that's good. Let's see. Um, going back to American Horror Story for a second, um, what Tom from MySpace is saying is the new season of American Horror Story is uh, the 1984. So it's it's a season based in 1984. I don't actually with American Horror Story, I only watch it on Netflix so I can binge it all together. So I haven't seen any of the new season at all, and I'm very excited for it to go on Netflix. So I've only seen up to Apocalypse, and I did not really love Apocalypse. Well, no, I liked Apocalypse. It was fine. I didn't like Cult. That one wasn't great. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm really excited about this 1984 one, like just solely based on the costumes. Let's be serious. <laughs> Hasn't Lady Gaga been in some of them? Yeah, yeah. She was in um, The Hotel. Okay. It was really good. I liked Hotel a lot. Well, this it sucks. It almost sucks a little bit living in this time because like there's just so much new great TV every day, and there's just no way to consume it all. You just kind of yeah. gotta, you know, it's it gets so easy to stick with your genre. Even more as time passes, it gets even easier to stick with your genre, your preferences, and just not watch anything else. I think it's really cool too. Like, like take House for instance. What we were talking about earlier is that that TV show was definitely built to be watched on a weekly basis. You sit down with your family, you watch one episode, you forget about it, and you move on to the next week. It doesn't matter if the story progresses or not in these little, like, snippets of fluff. It didn't matter. But now everything is so binge-watch. You want to watch it all together and get this one cohesive story. It, that that kind of structure of, like, having filler episodes is just repetitive <laughs> and not as interesting to watch anymore. It's, Patrick just sees he has the rota. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's 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 all very different now, the way that television is being written and consumed, and they yep. have to change it a bit. Yep, streaming changed a lot of things. Which, as someone who dislikes that fluff, I, I, I want to say it's for the better, but it's a preference. Because, I mean, there's still a, a kind of a nostalgic thing to think about back in the day, how we would watch an episode every week, you know, yeah. something we don't do so much anymore. Uh, I want to talk about one more piece of media before we move on, uh, and that's Westworld. Please tell me some of you guys. I, I, you guys haven't watched Westworld. I've seen bits and pieces. Had have seen some of it while I watched it. But um, uh, Christopher Nolan's brother, Jonathan Nolan, uh, is the writer and or showrunner. And well, he's definitely the writer. I don't know if he runs the show or not, but him and his producing partner probably do. Um, and it's it's a really interesting show. It's HBO, and I, at this point, I have no doubt HBO is going to make a push to make it the new uh, Dragons. Uh, Game, Game of Thrones. Thrones. Game of Thrones. I don't know what's <laughs> wrong with me. I literally Dungeons and Dragons is what came into my mind. I don't know what just happened. My brain is melting Similar. down. It means it's time. Yeah, I'm like kind of same. It means it's time to uh, uh, to end the podcast. But I, it's uh, it seems really clear that they're going to make it make a real big push to make it that next thing because there's already so many parallels. Because uh, everyone talks about how with Game of Thrones, it started out pretty mild compared to how it went crazy and what it turned into, both yeah. with the amount of craziness and then like. There wasn't even really dragons to start with, though they did talk about them. The first couple seasons of Westworld are one thing, and it looks like what it's turning into is completely different. It was this Western show, and now it's going to be in modern or, or even futuristic, spacey, wacy times. It's really strange. 
Uh, but I do highly recommend it uh, if you haven't seen it. Uh, Soul Patch says, Westworld, I'm in season one, but the 70s movie was one of my favorite movies as a kid. See, I want to go back and watch it. I haven't watched it. I, did, I honestly never even heard of it, which is weird. As many westerns and movies from that era as I watched with my father. Um, but I really think it's going to turn into something that's even more of a spectacle than it is right now. Because like, the show is nuts. I honestly only watched it uh, because of The Nerd Rider, which is a YouTube channel with this uh, young man takes very specific things and it's not always movies it's often movies but not always he i highly recommend this channel by the way go look it up the nerd writer uh just search that on youtube it'll come right up but he he makes these very analytical videos they're usually only five or six minutes long he picks things apart he often will talk about an actor and how, why they're good what they do that's good and he did a whole one on anthony anthony hopkins and the thing he used to pick apart Anthony Hopkins' acting method was a, was a bit from Westworld. So I watched that video, and it was so chilling and so good, I went back and watched that first season, probably that next day. And uh, I loved it. And so I watched it for Anthony Hopkins, and it's not clear if Anthony Hopkins will even be in it anymore. I mean, story-wise, he, he certainly won't, but um, it's good. I do highly recommend it. Uh, it it's very good. Uh, yeah, a lot of people saying they've seen the movie, but not the series. Uh, I only know of the original Westworld by Yul Brynner. Yeah, so the series on HBO is good. It is worth it. Uh, it's not, it's, it's almost the super far opposite of that fluffy episodic thing we were talking about. Uh, well, I see, I say that. I would say, uh, Prison Break would set on that polar opposite, because it's just plot, 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 go, go, go. Yeah. That's not. This would be, would almost be another version of that. It's not even plot, plot, craziness, craziness. It's like it's it's much like Christopher Nolan and Jonathan Nolan have made their brand with movies like Inception and uh, you know all, all those Christopher Nolan movies. It's just wacky, out of order, and nonsensical in terms of how the story is told. And I think it's a great, it's a good time. It's a good exercise to go watch it. So check that out. Any other uh, TV recommendations or anything we need to discuss before we get out of here? Because it's time to wrap it up. No, I think we've hit the highlights. Well, we've definitely got a lot of good recommendations here. A lot of the stuff you guys have mentioned, I'll be sure to lay in bed tonight and just kind of Google it. I'm and, really uh, interested in that lock and key one. Yeah. I really want to watch that. Yeah, I mean, it's on Netflix. Maybe we'll just eat dinner and watch that tonight. Would Maybe it won't be bad. Anything else? Um, not from my perspective. All right, well, guys, be sure to come back tomorrow. I mean, if you wake up early, 6 a.m. Eastern time is when, we're, when our new video will be posted. We did a, we actually did a little bit of thrifting today. We haven't done a lot of thrifting in the last couple of days worth of videos because we have been trying to stay at home. But we found ourselves having to run an errand today to the other side of town, and we stopped at a Goodwill. And this is actually, let's talk about this, I guess, a little bit before we get out of here. Uh, we can wrap up on this note. It's kind of hard to decide what to do because... There's a lot of people saying that uh, the socially responsible thing to do right now is to just stay at home. And I can definitely get behind that. Uh, but then there's, there's also kind of the fact that, like, if you look at the progression of the coronavirus and et cetera, et cetera, like, um, it's, we're not doing so bad here in Phoenix. Like, there are some cases, but it's been pretty much at a standstill. And so, you, you know, if you look at it state by state, plenty of state governors have ordered, hey, stay shut down. And plenty of places out here in the, in the West where it's pretty much really warm and stuff. Um, that's not the case. You know, things haven't been shut down. The, the most order we've gotten from government is just, hey, do what you can, wash your hands, et cetera, et cetera. So I say that to say we were on the other side of town today. We did stop at a Goodwill, and it was crazy good. Hmm. It was crazy, crazy good. And so weird like man maybe we should wake up tomorrow and go to 20 goodwills if no one's out shopping them uh maybe maybe we should go to them now and it's a hard decision because like responsibly stay inside but like we stand to make a lot of money i'm not trying to be greedy about it but it's like you guys come back tomorrow and watch the episode we basically went to one goodwill and came home with all this crazy stuff for our toy booth and uh so that's maybe another interesting conversation we could have next week maybe we'll come back and talk about that because I've already had some conversations in the comments with some of you guys about, you know, your Goodwills are closed down. And there's still a few people commenting that the Goodwills that they've gone to and stuff, uh, you know, are are still going. So they're still shopping. And, you know, 
it's kind of where we're at right now. We really don't know if we're going to wake up and go thrifting tomorrow. Every day I wake up, I check my news. I'm waiting for like, all right, Arizona's shut down. All right, Phoenix shut down. All right, the virus is spreading real crazy. But as of yet, it's not here. It's just, yeah. it's not. Uh, don't get me wrong. I am fully aware some of the states where you guys are, the spread is so bad. You've all got to lock yourself in your house. And, uh, you know, do we all lock ourselves in the house here so it doesn't get that way? Probably that's the most sensible thing to do. But... You know, there's also this notion that, like, hot climates, this kind of disease doesn't spread so much. I don't scientifically know, and I'm not saying if that's why it's not so bad. Yeah, it's not confirmed. Yeah, that's not something I know anything about the science. But but uh, I did say all this to say, come back tomorrow's video is going to be good because we got some good stuff at the thrift store. And uh, as of now, we're probably going to keep thrifting until, until we just absolute, until it absolutely would be a bad idea to. I will say my hands are dry as a bone. I, every time I go into the thrift store before I leave, I wash my hands before I leave there. And, uh, Goodwill's here, at least, have been doing a really good job at keeping their hand sanitizer dispensers uh, full. So, like, I'm washing my hands and sanitizing them just constantly. Same. And even, like, right now, I, I think all of us realize as soon as this happened how much we all touch our face. You know what I mean? And I certainly do this whole entire video I've been thinking about. There's, like, there's some gum gumminess in my eye. <laughs> and I just want to stick my finger in there, but I'm not going to. Because it's been about an hour since I've washed my hands. Um, but, yeah, do come back tomorrow. Come back, check out tomorrow's video. Uh, we we did some some all right thrifting today. Def, uh, basically, when this podcast is over, we're gonna shoot the wrap up for tomorrow's video. I'm sitting here looking at the stuff just off the screen uh, that we got at the thrift today. I'm excited about it. Uh, but outside of that, guys, be safe. Thanks for all your uh, movie and TV recommendations. Definitely can't wait to watch a few of those things you guys mentioned. Uh, and then what else before we get out of here? Hit that subscribe button, though I don't know why you'd be watching our podcast if you're not already subscribed. Uh, we appreciate you guys. We appreciate you hanging out. And uh, I guess this is peace out. Until next time.